<clears throat> in this video, we're going to be talking about the inverse relations and inverse functions. If you are asked in this example to find an inverse of this relation, and this is a, just a group of points, the inverse simply means you are going to invert the x and the y. So the inverse of 0, negative 8, will be negative 8, 0. So all you're doing here is just flip-flopping the x with the y. So this 8, negative 4 would end up being negative 4, 8. And the last one, negative 5, or excuse me, 5, negative 5, will turn to negative 5, positive 5. So you are just inverting the x and the y. In this example, if you are given an equation and asked to find an equation of the inverse relation, again, you will just invert the x and the y. So instead of x cubed y, it will be y cubed x equals negative 6. All right, in these examples, we are going to determine whether or not the graphs are one-to-one. -one. If we use the horizontal line test, what that says is if a horizontal line can intersect the graph, oops, I should have put more than once. So if the horizontal line intersects the graph more than once, then it is not a one-to-one -one function. So let's look at this first graph on the left. I draw a horizontal line. There is only one intersection. No matter where you draw the horizontal line, there will only be one intersection. So that function would be one-to-one. On this middle example, I can draw a horizontal line here. It would have two intersections, which means that one is not one-to-one. -one. And the last one, same thing. Doesn't matter if I draw the horizontal line here or here. I touch it more than once, which means it is not one-to-one. -one. All right. On these next examples, we are going to be given a function and find its inverse. The steps to find the inverse are to replace the f of x with a y, then invert the x and y, and the last step will be to solve for the new y. So on this example, our function is f of x equals x minus 4. So this is linear, which means it is one-to-one, -one, so we'll have an inverse. So I am going to <clears throat> follow the three steps. I'm going to replace the f of x with a y. So now I have y equals x minus 4. Then I will invert the x and the y. So x equals y minus 4, and then the last step is to solve for the new y. So I will add 4 to both sides to get that y by itself. So y equals x plus 4. You will see this noted as f to the negative 1 of x equals x plus 4. This denotes that that is the inverse of your function. All right, on this next example, my function is f of x equals 9 over x plus 4. If you do put that in your graphing calculator and graph it, you get a graph similar to the one that is on the right. It does pass the one-to-one -one test, the horizontal line test that says it is one-to-one, -one, so we will be able to find its inverse following the three steps. I'm going to replace the f of x with a y. So now I have y equals 9 over x plus 4. 
then I will invert my x and y. So now I have x equals 9 over y plus 4. Now my last step is to solve for y. Since y is in the denominator on the right side of the equation, I'm going to multiply both sides of the equation by that denominator of y plus 4. Because when I do that, it'll cancel. Then on the left, I'll distribute this x. So x times y gives me xy plus x times 4 gives me 4x equals 9. So what I have done is I have taken the y out of the denominator and now I can isolate it. I'm going to subtract the 4x from both sides. So now I have xy equals 9 minus 4x and the last <clears throat> thing to do to get that y by itself is to divide everybody on both sides by the x. So there's the y by itself. 9 over x does not reduce. Minus 4x over x. Those x's cancel, so you will just have the 4. So 9 over x minus 4 is the inverse. All right, on this next example, f of x equals x cubed minus 8. So this is the cube graph shifted down 8, which would pass the horizontal line test. So I am going to find the inverse following the three steps. I'm going to change f of x to y. So y equals x to the third minus 8. Then I will invert the x and the y. So now I have x equals y to the third minus 8. And then the last step is to solve for y. So the first thing I will do is add the 8 to the other side. So on the left, I've got x plus 8 equals y to the third power. To get that y by itself, I need to perform the opposite operation of raising something to the third power. The opposite of that would be to take the cube root. If I do it to one side, I have to do it to the other. The reason I did that is on the right, the cube root and the cube power cancel each other out, and your y is by itself. On the left, I am left with the cube root of x plus 8. That would be the inverse function. All right, on this next example, I've got f of x equals 2x squared plus 5. If you are looking at that graph as a whole, over on the right, it's a parabola which does not pass the horizontal line test. But this verbiage here, where x is greater than or equal to zero, what it wants you to use is just the part of the graph where the x's are greater than or equal to zero which means just that right side. If I am just looking at that side only, then it would pass the one-to-one -one test, so I will find its inverse by following the three steps. I'll replace the f of x with a y. So y equals 2x squared plus 5. Then I will invert the x and the y. So x equals 2y squared plus 5. And then I'll solve it for y. Start off by subtracting the 5 from both sides. So on the left, I will have x minus 5 equals 
2y squared. Then I will divide both sides by 2. So now I've got x minus 5 over 2 equals y squared. So I've got an exponent to remove to get that y by itself, just like I had on the last example. To get rid of a squared power, I need to square root. So on the right, it cancels out the squared. So I just have y equals, and then on the left, there's just nothing I can do to simplify that. So I have the square root of x minus 5 over 2. All right, last example, f of x equals the square root of x plus 2. So this one, it's a square root graph, been sh has been shifted to the left 2 because of that inside shift. <clears throat> so it would pass the 1 to 1 test. So I will follow the steps to find the inverse. Replace the f of x with a y. So I have y equals the square root of x plus 2. Then invert your x and your y. So x equals the square root of y plus 2. And now I need to solve this for y. To get rid of that square root, because the y plus 2, it's like it's trapped under the square root. So I need to remove the square root. And the opposite of that is to square it. So I'm squaring both sides. So now I have x squared equals, on the right, the square root cancels out the squared. So I have y plus 2. And the last step to get that y by itself now is to subtract 2 from both sides. So now I've got x squared minus 2 equals y. When I graph that, that would be a parabola because it's an x squared graph shifted down 2. So only part of this graph is the inverse only where x is greater than or equal to zero, only the right half. <clears throat> because this part right here is the inverse of that square root graph, only that part. You'll notice that if you folded this graph along that line, which is the line y equals x, the square root graph that was blue, and the x squared graph, just the right half of it, would actually lie on top of each other. That is what inverse functions look like on the graph.